This is a Manchu name. The family name is Azanjaro. The Gangx Emperor, personal name Cixin, was the 11th emperor of the Qing dynasty, and the 9th Qing emperor to rule over China. His reign lasted from 1875 to 1908, but in practice he ruled, under Empress Dajushk's influence, only from 1889 to 1898. He initiated the Hundred Days Reform, but was abruptly stopped when the Empress Dajia launched a coup in 1898, after which he was put under house arrest until his death. His regnal name, Gangx, means glorious succession. Accession to the throne and upbringing, Cixin was the second son of Prince Chun, and his primary spouse Yanera Wanzhen, a younger sister of Empress Dajia On January 12, 1875, Cixin's cousin, the Tanzhe Emperor, died without a son. Empress Dajia Sian suggested enthroning one of Prince Gong's sons as the next emperor, but she was overruled by Shixi. Instead, breaking the imperial convention that a new emperor must always be of a generation after that of the previous emperor, Shixi nominated her nephew and the imperial family agreed with her choice. Cixin was named heir and successor to his uncle, the Xianfeng Emperor, rather than his cousin and predecessor, the Tanzhe Emperor so as to maintain the father-son succession law. He ascended to the throne at the age of four and used Gangs as his regnal name, therefore he is known as the Gangx Emperor. He was adopted by Empress Dajia Shixi as a son. For her part, she remained as regent under the title Holy Mother Empress Dajia. Beginning in 1876, the Gangx Emperor was taught by Wen Tongyi, who had also been involved in the disastrous upbringing of the Tanzhe Emperor, yet, somehow managed to be exonerated of all charges. Wen would instill in the emperor a notion of having to emphasize his filial piety towards the empress Dowagers. In 1881, when the Gangx emperor was nine, Empress Dowager Sian died unexpectedly, leaving Empress Dowager Shixi as sole regent for the boy. However, Shixi had been suffering from long-standing ill health. During this time, the imperial eunuchs often abused their influence over the boy emperor. The Gangx Emperor reportedly also had begun to hold some audiences on his own as an act of necessity. Taking over the reins of power, in 1887, the Gangx Emperor would have been old enough to begin to reign in his own right. However, the previous year, several courtiers, including Prince Chun and Wen Tongyi, had petitioned the Empress Dowager to postpone her retirement from the regency. Despite Shixi's agreement to remain as regent, by 1886 the Gangx Emperor had begun to write comments on the palace memorials. In the spring of 1887, he partook in his first field ploughing ceremony, and by the end of the year, had begun to rule under the supervision of Shixi. Eventually, in February 1889, in preparation for Empress Dajia Shixi's retirement, the Gangx Emperor was married. As his empress, and much to his disliking, Shixi had selected her own niece, the Gangx Emperor's cousin, Jingfen, to become Empress, who would be known as Empress Longwu. She also selected, as his two concubines, sisters, who became consorts Jin and Tsen. The following week, with the Gangx Emperor married, Shixi retired from the regency. Years in power, even after the Gangx Emperor began formal rule, Empress Dajia Shixi continued to influence his decisions and actions, despite residing several months of the year at the Summer Palace. Wen Tongyi reportedly observed that while the emperor attended to day-to-day -to -day state affairs, in more difficult cases, the emperor and the Grand Council sought the advice of the Empress Dowager. In fact, the emperor would quite often journey up to the Summer Palace to pay his respects to his aunt and to discuss state affairs with her. In March 1891, the Gangx Emperor received the foreign ministers to China at an audience in the Pavilion of Purple Light, in what is now part of Tsungnanhai repeating something that had also been done by his cousin, the Tanzhe Emperor, in 1873. That summer, under pressure from the foreign legations and in response to revolts in the Yangtze River Valley that were targeting Christian missionaries, the emperor issued an edict giving Christians imperial protection. The Gangx Emperor, growing up, apparently had been instilled with a notion of the importance of frugality. In this vein, in 1892, he tried to implement a series of draconian measures in order to reduce expenditures by the imperial household department, 
which proved to be one of his few administrative successes. But, it was only a partial victory, as he nevertheless had to approve higher expenditures than he would have liked, in order to meet the needs of Empress Dajushksi. 1894 saw the outbreak of the First Sino-Japanese War. During the war, even though he was the sovereign ruler of the Qing Empire, the Ganx Emperor was often bypassed by the officials who instead sent their court memorials to Empress Dajushksi for her reading and approval. Eventually, two sets of Grand Council memoranda were created, one for the Emperor and the other for the Empress Dajur a Euro a practice which would continue until it was rendered unnecessary by the events in the fall of 1898. Following the Qing Empire's humiliating defeat and being forced to agree to the terms of the Treaty of Shimonoseki, the Ganx Emperor reportedly expressed his wish to abdicate. The Emperor and the Qing government faced further humiliation in late 1897 when the German Empire used the murders of two priests in Shandong province as a pretext to occupy Jiaotso Bay, prompting a scramble for concessions by the other foreign powers. Following the war and the scramble for concessions, the Ganx Emperor came to believe that by learning from constitutional monarchies like Japan, the Qing Empire would become more politically and economically powerful. In June 1898, the Emperor began the Hundred Days Reform, aimed at a series of sweeping political, legal, and social changes. For a brief time, after the supposed retirement of Empress Dajushksi, the Ganx Emperor issued edicts for a massive number of far-reaching modernizing reforms with the help of more progressive ministers such as Kang Yuwei and Liang Kuchao. Changes ranged from infrastructure to industry and the civil examination system. The Ganx Emperor issued decrees allowing the establishment of a modern university in Beijing, the construction of the Luhan Railway, and a system of budget similar to that of the West. The initial goal was to make China a modern, constitutional empire, but still within the traditional framework, as with Japan's Meiji Restoration. The reforms, however, were not only too sudden for a China still under significant Neo-Confucian influence and other elements of traditional culture, but also came into conflict with Empress Dajushksi, who held real power. Many officials, deemed useless and dismissed by the Ganx Emperor, were begging the Empress Dowager for help. Although Shixi did nothing to stop the Hundred Days reform from taking place, she knew the only way to secure her power base was to stage a military coup. The Ganx Emperor was made aware of such a plan, and asked Kang Yuwei and his reformist allies to plan his rescue. They decided to use the help of Yuan Shikai, who had a modernized army, albeit only 6,000 strong. Shixi relied on Rondlu's army in Tianjin. Rondlu also had an ally. General Dong Fuyang, who commanded 10,000 Muslim Kansu braves of the Imperial Army, including generals such as Ma Fuyang and Ma Fulu. They were stationed in the Beijing metropolitan area and constantly attacked foreigners and Westerners, they were on the side of the conservatives under Shixi during the coup. They were also armed with Western rifles and modern artillery, which showed that the conservative faction of Empress Daja Shixi were willing to use Western technology. However, the day before the staged coup was supposed to take place, Yuan Shikai revealed all the plans to Rond Lu, exposing the Ganx Emperor's plans. This gained Yuan Shikai the trust of Empress Dajushksi, as well as the status of the lifetime enemy of the Ganx Emperor, and later, the Emperor's younger half-brother, Zaifeng. Following the exposure of the plot, the Emperor and Empress Daja met, and the Emperor retreated to Iantai Pavilion a palace on a lake that is now part of the Tsungnan High Compound. Larry Kaya Sheng, a Taiwanese professor, proposes an alternative view that Ganx might have been led into a trap by the reformists led by Kang Yuwei, who in his turn was in Larry's opinion tricked by British missionary Timothy Richard and former Japanese Prime Minister Ita Hayarabumi into agreeing to appoint Ita as one of many foreign advisers. British Ambassador Claude MacDonald said that the reformists had actually much injured the modernization of China. According to Louis, Empress Dajushksi learned of the plot, and decided to put an end to it and save China from coming under foreign control. Under house arrest after 1898. The Ganx Emperor's duties after 1898 became rather limited, compared to his position prior. While some have argued that the emperor was effectively removed from power as emperor and was placed under house arrest, 
he actually did retain some status. The emperor was kept informed of the state affairs, reading them with Empress Darjushksi prior to audiences, and was also present at audiences, sitting on a stool to Shiksi a Euro unregistered trademark s left hand, while Shiksi occupied the main throne. He discharged his ceremonial rules, such as offering up the imperial sacrifices. However, he would never reign alone again. In 1898, shortly after the collapse of the Hundred Days Reform, the Gangs Emperor's health began to decline, prompting Empress Darjushksi to name Pojan, a son of the Emperor's cousin, the reactionary Prince Twin, as heir presumptive. He eventually was examined by the doctor at the French legation, and was diagnosed with chronic nephritis, and it was also found that he was impotent. On August 14, 1900, the Gangs Emperor, along with Empress Darjushksi, Empress Longu and some other court officials, fled from Beijing as the forces of the Eight Nation Alliance marched on the capital to relieve the legations which had been besieged during the Boxer Rebellion. Returning to the capital in January 1902, after the withdrawal of the Allied powers, the Gangs Emperor was known to have spent the next few years working in his isolated palace with watches and clocks, which had been a childhood fascination, some say in an effort to pass the time until the death of Empress Darjushksi. He also read widely and spent time learning English from Shiksi's Western-educated lady-in-waiting, Princess Derling. Death, the Gangs Emperor died on November 14, 1908, a day before Empress Darjushksi. He died relatively young, at the age of 37. For a long time there were several theories about the Emperor's death, none of which was completely accepted by historians. Most were inclined to maintain that the Gangs Emperor was poisoned by Empress Darjushksi because she was afraid of the Emperor reversing her policies after her death, and wanted to prevent this from happening. The fact that the two died a day apart is significant. Another possibility is that the Gangs Emperor was poisoned by Yuan Shikai, who knew that if the Emperor were to ever come to power again, Yuan would likely be executed for treason. There are no reliable sources to prove who murdered the Gangs Emperor. In 1911, Shiksi's former eunuch Li Lianying was murdered, possibly by Yuan, implying that they had conspired in the emperor's murder. This theory was offered by Pei in his biography, who claimed he heard it from an old eunuch. The medical records kept by the Gangs emperor's physician indicate the emperor suffered from spells of violent stomach chash, and that his face would turn blue, typical symptoms of arsenic poisoning. To dispel persistent rumors that the emperor had been poisoned, the Qing Imperial Court produced documents and doctor's records suggesting that the Gangs Emperor died from natural causes, but these did not successfully divert suspicion. On November 4, 2008, forensic tests revealed that the level of arsenic in the Gangs Emperor's remains was 2,000 times higher than that of ordinary people. Scientists concluded that the poison could only be administered in a high dose one time. China Daily quoted a historian, Dai Yi, who speculated that Empress Darjushksi may have known of her imminent death and may have worried that the Gangs Emperor would continue his reforms after her death. The Gangs Emperor was succeeded by Empress Darjushksi's choice as heir, his nephew Pim, who took the regnal name Xuantong. The Gangs Emperor's consort, who became Empress Darjilongwu, signed the abdication decree as regent in 1912 ending 2,000 years of imperial rule in China. Empress Da Jilongwu died childless in 1913. After the Xinhai Revolution of 1911, the Republic of China funded the construction of the Gangs Emperor's mausoleum in the western Qing tombs. The tomb was robbed during the Chinese Civil War and the underground palace is now open to the public. Historical Views in 1912 Sun Yat-sen praised the Gangs Emperor for his educational reform package that allowed China to learn more about Western culture. After the establishment of the People's Republic of China in 1949, historian Fan Wenlan called the Gangs Emperor a Manchu noble who could accept Western ideas. Some historians think that the Gangs Emperor was the first Chinese leader to implement policies of modernization and capitalism. The Gangs Emperor also epitomized the lowest imperial power had come since the beginning of the Qing dynasty, and was the only Qing emperor to have been put under house arrest during his own reign. Personal life The Gangs Emperor had one empress and two consorts in total. 
his principal spouse was Empress Xia Dingjing, while his two consorts were Consort Jin and Consort Sen. The emperor was forced by Empress Daozhi Shixi to marry her niece Jingfen, who was two years his senior. Jingfen's father, Ge Xiang, and Shixi selected her to be the Gangs Emperor's Empress Consort in order to strengthen the power of her own family. After the marriage, Jingfen was made empress and was granted the honorific title of Longyu, meaning auspicious and prosperous after the death of her husband. However, the Gangs Emperor detested Empress Longyu, and spent most of his time with his favorite concubine, Consort Sen. Rumors say that in 1900, Consort Sen was drowned by being thrown into a well on Shixi's order after Consort Sen begged Empress Daozhi Shixi to let the Gangs Emperor stay in Beijing for negotiations with the foreign powers. That incident happened before Empress Daozhi Shixi was preparing to leave the Forbidden City due to the occupation of Beijing by the Eight Nation Alliance in 1900. Like his predecessor, the Tanzhe Emperor, the Gangs Emperor died without issue. After the Gangs Emperor's death in 1908, Empress Daozhi Longyu reigned in cooperation with Zaifeng. Honors, Knight of the Order of the Black Eagle. Knight Grand Cross, in brilliance of the Order of the Red Eagle. Knight Grand Cross of the Royal Order of Kamham Hai Knight Grand Collar of the Supreme Order of the Chrysanthemum. Ancestry. In popular culture, in the short alternative history story Foreign Devils by Walter John Williams, China is invaded by the same fearsome Martians depicted in H. G. Wells' War of the Worlds. China suffers terrible death and destruction and the Emperor is forced to flee, but by the time the Martians have died off from earthly diseases, they have destroyed most of the Gangs Emperor's human enemies. The Emperor then proceeds to eliminate his remaining foes, assume unquestioned power in China and enact his reforms, fully and unhindered. He uses the disarray of European powers, which were also invaded by the Martians, to shake off colonial tutelage and make China a world power fifty years earlier than it did in our history. In this changed history, China remains a monarchy and there is no Chinese Republic. References <laughs>